So how many of y'all, like myself, have been wanting to travel to China ever since all of the toys or everything you had as a kid said made in China on it, right? <laughs> Nowadays, I want to travel for the innovation, for the technology, for the culture. I want to see everything when I go there or get an opportunity to go there, man. So until then, I watch videos. And this video right here is 20 strange things you will only see in China. Let's check it out. Every country in the world has a few of its own unique quirks and funny habits. Here are a few of China's idiosyncrasies for your eyeballs. From geese doing police work to public shaming for wearing pajamas, here are 20 strange things you will only see in China. Number 20. The Mink Farms in China. Now, you should probably know that mink farms are not actually uniquely Chinese. Far from it, in fact. I have no idea why we're starting here with this list, but what the heck do I know? I only work here and talk a lot. The idea of farming animals for their fur might fill you with a sense of abject horror. You know, the same feeling that you would get at the sight of Cruella de Vil as a child. But these places do actually exist, and they are in many places throughout the world. The mink is a part of the weasel family, and has long had the misfortune of being farmed for its fur in many countries. These range from Europe to the United States to, yes, China. And during the events that we shall not mention by name, you know, when we all had to stay at home all the time, the mink was found to be harboring a specific mutation of the unmentionable disease. This led to huge culls of the creatures on the fur farms in Europe. In fact, Denmark dutifully removed all the suspects from existence. China, however, did not have the same reaction to this so-called problem. So much so that people have used this as another way to point fingers at China as the source. But anyways, minks are kept in huge numbers, grown and then slaughtered to make stuff out of their fur, and it is gross. But it's not only China that does it, so don't kid yourself. That's a, that's a pretty bold accusation to make right there. I, and that's the first time I heard about that. Especially during that time when everything was coming out. I never heard this. And it is gross, but it's not only China that does it, so don't kid yourself. Before we go on, like this video, smash the subscribe button, and click the notification bell right now, or this centipede will crawl on your face when you're sleeping. Number 18. Squat Toilets. Here's another thing which is not, despite it being on this list, unique to China. Honestly, this is a bit of a shambles, isn't it? But that's exactly how it goes when you try and point out the differences all the time. Mostly humans are pretty similar wherever they happen to be in the world, but that's a point for another more serious discussion. We're here to point and laugh and stare. So, you know, here's a toilet fact for you. Lavatories in China can be either the kind that are common in the Western world, you know, the sit-down sort, or they can be the squat kind. These are a hole in the ground with a footrest on either side over which the toilet using individual will squat to do their business. Bro, any of y'all ever played sports and ever had to do wall squats? You know how bad your legs be burning? Can you imagine if you a person that when you go to the bathroom, you take your time, you, you be in there for a while? Like your legs would be sleep and burning, like a, a combination of the two. Uh, I, don't, I don't know about that one. I, I, I ain't feeling that one. In China and other places around the world, actually, it's considered more hygienic to use this hands-free facility rather than touching the gross toilet germs of a sit-down version. It makes sense, but the practicalities of clothing and squatting and, dare I say, splashback, those are all too real. So there you have it. Sometimes splashback. toilets are just different. Big whoopity doo. Number 17, the Dragon Escalator. I'm sorry to be the bearer of bad news yet again, but before we head into the thrill ride of the Dragon Escalator, you should know that this place has now been permanently closed to the public. I know, it's a massive bummer and- Why even show it then and get our hopes up if we like it? 
You'll have to rethink your entire vacation plans altogether. Sucks to be you. Just over 50 miles to the north of Beijing, you'll find the Longing Gorge. This is where one of China's largest dams is located. And for some reason, some people thought that it would be an excellent spot for a novelty escalator. Well, naturally, you know, why the heck not? So that's why they built a gigantic bright yellow and green dragon-shaped escalator, which used to transport passengers up the 850 feet of the gorge. But the the reason for this is not quite all that obvious. Anyhow, there is no accounting for some ideas, and apparently they went ahead and built this bizarre attraction, offered boat trips, and started slinging people off the edge of the dam with a bungee cord, and tried to fashion a thrilling day out of adventure at a seemingly functional concrete structure. But for reasons unknown, that dragon escalator is no longer available for such excitement. Number 16. The Kissing Dinosaurs so here's a novelty, utterly inexplicable, but why the chuff not? Reckoned by many to be the largest dinosaurs in the world, this pair of dinos guards the entrance to the small town of Erlian, or Ehrenhot, which is located in one of the most remote regions in China, right across the border from Mongolia. The dinosaurs are engaged in a rather tongue-based snog and <laughs> form this arch across the road, under which people drive as they cross into the bounds of the town. What it's all about well, that's not really immediately apparent. It turns out, however, that this region is actually famous for being a place where loads of fossils have been found over the last 50 or so years. The salt lakes of the region have been the source of masses of old dinosaur remains, so the local towns have been engaged in efforts to promote the area as a place you can visit. The cultivation of tourism for the bone-based discoveries has resulted in a few seemingly odd gestures. The largest of these is no doubt the kissing dinosaurs, but unfortunately, Unfortunately, despite the efforts and originality, the Chinese authorities to promote this area to tourists, it still remains largely unvisited, extremely empty in general, and frankly, pretty bleak. It is, hey, even with all dinosaurs need love too, bro. Like, which I thought this was. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? The smooching statues in the world, really, really far away from anything else at all. Number 15 Canned Air. People really will buy anything now, won't they? An Australian company came up with a scheme to sell stuff that's really not exactly theirs to capture and export, but that's just nitpicking now, isn't it? They decided to collect air. You know, the stuff that you're breathing right now, air. And then they package it up and sell it to people in places that have poor quality air, mostly on the account of the fact that they're producing all the cheap goods that the people in good air places have been profiting from, but that's just just more nitpicking, isn't it? These Australian hustlers, <laughs> I mean business people, claim that they collect air from different locations across Australia, and therefore each one offers a unique scent. It probably just smells like money to them, let's be honest. Each can, they say, hold up to 130 to 140 deep breaths of air. They're flogging this to people in China, where the air is of poor quality and has high levels of pollution. I just wonder though, where do they get their cans manufactured? It is a genuine question. Number 14. Largest Ghost City Ordos Kangbashi was designed and then mostly built to be a new city on a world-class level. The trouble is, Nobody actually lives there, and they never have. China is blighted by several of these gigantic monoliths to expansion that has failed to materialize the stuff that makes it work. You know, people, businesses, and what have you. This city began to be referred to as a ghost town back in 2009, when several international news agencies noticed that there was a distinct lack of people living in the new city. But this is not normally how a ghost town occurs. Not historically, anyways. The ghost towns of our imaginations are those of the Wild West, rapidly constructed towns that were built around a mine which, once depleted, left the town without any further usage and its inhabitants would usually move on to the next place to make a living. Or even the modern ghost towns that happen in places where young people leave their countryside homes all in search of work in the city and never return, thus slowly emptying the culture of a rural area until there's nothing left. But these ghost towns in China are a different 
different sort of beast. They're constructed in the heavy boom of capitalist expansion, except that they struggle to draw people to live and work there. They're driven by profit, but seem to miss the point of a place somehow. And so, cities like this one just sit here, ready for hundreds of thousands of inhabitants, but not really built for anyone, and stuck out in the middle of a desert. Eventually, though, people do sometimes arrive. The thing with anything as big as these Chinese cities that are built from scratch is that they don't have all the infrastructure and other necessities to actually become real places for real people to live. Those things do sometimes materialize and people begin to live there, and sometimes they don't. And seemingly brand new buildings just gradually disintegrate and collapse, providing work for a security guard perhaps, but not much else. Number 13. Police geese. Now, I've never really thought about geese having anywhere near enough discipline, or for that matter, being in any way trainable, but in China, they seem to have a whole other variety of goose. One that's so well behaved, in fact, that the Chinese police are using them for sentry duty. A police chief made a statement. I know parents looking at this like, if I could just get my kid to act like these geese. <laughs> I know it, bro regarding the proposed use of the birds in his district, saying that amongst all poultry, geese are known for being extremely vigilant and having excellent hearing. But then again, they're also known for pooping all over the place. But there you go, that means they're good for guarding stuff. Whoever trained him, he has gotta go down as one of the best to ever do it. Like, trainers come a dime a dozen, but him, he's up there. Like, to do that, that's different. I should imagine that replacing all the police guard dogs with geese has absolutely everything to do with the excellent qualities of these geese and nothing at all to do with the comparable expense of geese as opposed to a big old German shepherd. Well, whatever the reasons, this is a weird idea and I for one would like to know just how it turned out. What do you think? Have you ever encountered a goose that was in any way amenable to your ideas? In fact, have you ever met a goose that wasn't just a straight up jerk? Go ahead and let me know all about your favorite geese or any poultry really in the comment section down below. It's time those birds had a bit of a fan club. Number 12, Tianmen Skywalk. Tianmen Mountain in China's Hunan province is 1,279 meters above sea level. That's an impressive 4,196 feet for all you Americans. This is less than ideal though. If you're mad enough to go up onto a glass bridge, well then you're probably already a bit of a thrill seeker. But the safe sort of thrill, not the one where you might actually plunge thousands of feet to your ultimate doom. There are absolutely loads of these bridges in China. They have an estimated 2,300 of the things with glass panels for walkways and sides. Apparently, the booming tourist industry in China believes that people want to experience maximum vertigo when out. That's just too many. Like, that's too many people on that bridge, bro. I'm not getting on that. No. No. Ain't no reason they should allow. No. I'm, I, I'd be mad. I turn around and see all these people on this glass bridge. I, I, I'd be pissed. The tourist industry in China believes that people want to experience maximum vertigo when- And then you know people like play around and jump up and down. I'd be fuming. I'd be trying to race to get off. Out and about at the country's beauty spots. Because well, why not? This particular spectacle is screwed into the side of Tianmen Mountain and is known as the Skywalk. Well, that's one way of looking at it. Another is that it's a see-through walkway with nothing much more than a waist-high railing between you and a death plunge. But it's all a matter of perspective, and your perspective from up here is, well, breathtaking. Number 11. The Green Village. Located on Xingshan Island in an eastern province of China is a spooky village. It is a true ghost town, rather than the monolith of an overblown industrial boom like the monster-sized ghost cities, this village is actually dying of old age. This tiny island was once home to more than 2,000 fishermen and their families and had 500 houses and thriving fishing culture. Nowadays though, it's almost completely deserted and the houses are being reclaimed by the natural surroundings. 
Residents here began to pull up their tent stakes and leave in droves back in the 1990s. Life here was simple but tough, and the standards of education were poor. Even the food delivery to the island was unreliable, so people went in search of a better life, and by 1994, almost everyone had left. Now the homes and buildings on the island are slowly disappearing below a growing carpet of lush greenery. The island is reclaiming its space, and it certainly does make a rather interesting picture now, doesn't it? Well, thanks heavens for drone footage. That's about all of the else I can say. Number 10. The Red Beach even though this place is known as the Red Beach, that's somewhat misleading. It's red, that much is true, at least for part of the year, but it's not really a beach. There's no sand, but there are massive wetlands. This is a province of China about six hours away from Beijing. It's actually the largest of wetlands in the entire world. The red effect occurs every autumn and is caused by the specific species of seaweed that grows there. It turns from green to red as it absorbs the high level levels of saline from the water. Then naturally, the tourists begin to arrive, and that sea of red being irresistible to anyone's Instagram account. So many fun pick opportunities are to be had, not to mention the fact that there are loads of different birds to be seen, over 260 species to be precise. So if all these epic drone shots are not enough for you and you really have to see the crimson spectacle with your own eyeballs, then perhaps it's time to see it in all of its glory in October. Otherwise, it might just be a bit underdone and green, I suppose. Number nine. Ice and Snow Festival. Yo. Harbin, a city in the north of China, gets distinctly chilly, so they found a way to embrace their weather and make it into something fun. The annual Harbin International Ice and Snow Sculpture Festival takes place in January every year and is a huge exhibition of ice sculptures and such, all illuminated with colored lights. Yo, they are crushing any type of Christmas anything I've ever seen. You know what I mean? They are crushing. I ain't never seen no stuff like that. Look at that. And I don't, I'm, I'm never the person that would want to go out and go see the lights and stuff like that. I, I just ain't never been that guy. But for this though, yeah, I would. It's a huge exhibition of ice sculptures and such, all illuminated with colored lights. It's a massive event, and the sculptures themselves are flipping enormous. There are ice palaces, temples, and towers, all constructed from huge blocks of ice. Sculptures and intricate architectural features, all fashioned from the cold stuff, draw in people from all over the place to look at all of the creations. Oh, and to take all of the fun pics as well, of course. You wouldn't want to miss any Instagrammable opportunities like this one, would you? But do wear your thermals. It's not one for the easily chilled, or for that matter, anyone who might feel unnerved in a sea of snowmen. There are literally thousands of them here. Number 8. 798 Art Zone. There is a district of Beijing in China where there's allegedly a thriving artistic community. This, I'm sure that you're aware of, is not something new or unique. In fact, artists exist everywhere, and they're especially partial to setting up studios and communities in old, previously industrial or commercial buildings. So it should come as no surprise that this art community in Beijing has set itself up in a complex of a decommissioned military factory building. This place has become known as the 798 Art Zone on the account of one of the buildings being factory number <laughs> I see what they did there. 798. Basically, all of the decommissioned factories in this particular section have become art-related. They've housed artist studios, but as is always the case when trendy young people move in, it makes a place suddenly appealing. Thus, this district has been gentrified, obviously, and there are more high-end art galleries than up-and-coming artists. Nearly 200 galleries, exhibitions, and artists inhabit the space, and there are, naturally, plenty of other ways to have money extracted from you in the form of cafes, restaurants, and even fancy schmancy boutiques. This honestly sounds like anywhere else in the world to me, but it's True. located in China, so I guess that someone saw it worthy of this list. Number 7. The Stone Forest the Shilin Stone Forest is a rock formation in the Yunnan province of South China. These particular sorts of rocks are known as karsts formations and have been formed over the course of 270 million years as a result of seismic activity and the natural erosion of wind and water in the limestone. This 
See, if I knew how to meditate, this would be one of the first places I wanted to go and meditate at. Why? Don't ask me. I don't know. That's just the first thing that popped into my mind when I was watching it. Like, hmm, if you knew how to, this would be a dope spot. Stone Forest is an otherworldly landscape of great pillars and rock that create this dark winding space below. There are actually many smaller forests within the bounds of the larger landscape, and these have all kinds of cool features like waterfalls and caves and lakes, and there's even an underground river here as well. Parts of the place are a UNESCO World Heritage Site, so the Stone Forest is deemed unusual and significant enough to be acknowledged in that special gang of important places. There's also, of course, a bunch of legend and folklore that surrounds the space. It is too spooky for there not to be, really. One of the stories is of the Ashram Stone, a famous and often visited attraction within the forest, and as the tale goes, the stone was formed when a beautiful young girl called Ashima was forbidden from marrying the man that she loved, so she ran into the forest and was turned to stone. Sucks to be her, I would say. Poor girl couldn't catch a break. Number 6. Fake Apple Store China is a country where they manufacture the genuine Apple products that you all know, love, and are likely as not using right now, but they also make rather a lot of knockoff Apple-inspired products here as well, so it stands to reason that they can pull a fast one in the fakes department. Allegedly, in Kunming, the capital of China's Yunnan province, where there are no official Apple stores, a flawless version of the tech giant's retail appeared in 2011, except that it was a fake. Everything inside was a precise copy of the ubiquitous company's decor and products, but it was all phony. Even the staff were apparently fooled by it and believed that they were actually working at a genuine Apple store. Apple in California declined to comment on the matter of fake stores and such. Presumably, it's not really a massive problem, given their astounding success, despite these sorts of shenanigans. But it is likely something that they will deal with in the classic Californian style of lawyers. Lots and lots of lawyers. Such fun. Number 5. Pajamas are worn everywhere. Likely as not, you've seen some sights down at the Walmart. People seem to be more than oblivious about the need for changing their clothes. To I mean, hey, if you want to walk around and be comfortable all day, I mean, you should be able to. It's up to you. It's your clothes, your body. I, I don't see what the fuss is about be out in the world, and it's not uncommon to see people wearing their slippers or even their gym jams in the aisles of a supermarket. So again, we seem to be pointing at something that's probably not so unique to China after all. The way that this public pajama wearing is handled in China is kind of different though. When the officials of a city in the east of the country got wind that people were wearing their pajamas out and about all willy-nilly, well, that's when they decided to crack down on this shabby habit. They started off by taking photographs of people sporting their PJs in public, and then published them with their names, identity numbers, and the locations in which they had been snapped. The reason for this massive invasion of privacy? Well, according to those officials, these people had engaged in uncivilized behavior. They had used facial recognition technology to find the identities of the pajama deviants and had gone for a public shaming, a bit like putting them in the stocks and chucking old tomatoes at them. And that's the trouble with all these sorts of technological advances. Once they exist, there are always nefarious ways for them to be used, and most of the time, any kind of surveillance technology is a gift to a totalitarian regime, which not only uses the things to control the population, but also, and this is universal, to profit from them. I mean, just imagine if you were caught in your nighty in the Dollar Tree, and that led to a public naming and shaming. Number 4. Luazigua. Now I'm sure that I mangled the pronunciation of this place, but you know, that's the way it goes sometimes. We've already seen one shockingly red landscape in China, but here's another one for you and your lucky old eyeball. This time we're in a small village in southern China, where this stripy, brightly colored landscape has got all the drone footage and Instagram style images that you could shake a stick at. <laughs> It is rather photogenic though now, isn't it? Yes. The earth in this village is especially rich. Some strange reason I want ice cream all of a sudden just looking at this. I don't know why. Like some sherbet or something, don't it? 
rich in oxidized iron, and that's what gives the soil its vibrant red and deep maroon color. But the whole area is covered with color as the way that the land is divided into strips that curve around the hills just adds to the overall rainbow effect. White flowers, green crops, and red earth all sit side by side. I also give like a trippy vibe to it a little bit too as well. Like, man, if you're seeing these type of colors, you might need to go, you might have ate something that you wasn't supposed to eat or did something, you know what I mean? <laughs> creating some of the most stunning rural farmland if you happen to like that sort of thing. Number three, Three Gorges Dam. The Yellow River is a massive river in China and is also known as the River of Sorrow and the Scourge of the Sons of Han. Both of these pseudonyms seem much more exciting to me, so who knows why they named it the Yellow River and made that the official name. Anyways, here we are with another thing that humans have been poking around in and may or may not have done a whole lot of damage, causing a whole lot of destruction. It's a damn shame, that's for sure. The Yellow River is famous for its massive floods and it also also, as being one of the most extremely dangerous and unpredictable SOBs there is, so tinkering with its workings is probably not the brightest idea. But some Wallies went ahead and did just that when they built the Three Gorges Dam. This place is the world's largest power station, generating a whole lot of electricity, but not without serious problems that it's created elsewhere. The massive structure has been the source of huge ecological changes that have resulted in a massive increase in landslides as the disruption that the river and surrounding areas has taken its toll. The buildup of sediment that is caused by damming such a large river also has a knock-on effect for the biodiversity in the waters, as well as making the riverbanks much more prone to flooding. There's even some evidence that holding this much water in a new place would actually physically change the shape of the planet. But whoever let a little thing like that stand in the way of a massive damn power plant? Number two, Heaven's Gate Mountain. China's Tianmen Mountain Park is home to so many novel ways to travel up or around its massive peaks that it's the number one nightmare destination of all sufferers of vertigo everywhere. To scale Heaven's Gate Mountain, visitors can take the terrifying and extremely long road called Tears Popping All the Way Up, ah, Tianmen Shan Big Gate Road, or Tianmen Winding Mountain Road, and it's easy to see why. This so-called road travels up the side of the mountain which is almost four and a half thousand feet above sea level, with no less than 99 turns in the road itself. These hairpin turns are not only dangerous, they're actually terrifying. And if that wasn't enough, those that do make it up this road are then given a generous gift of 999 steps to climb in order to reach the top. But apparently when you get there, you're greeted with Heaven's Gate. Quite possibly because you're dead from a plunge down the sheer cliff face, or a heart attack from the endless stairway to heaven. Who could possibly say? It all does look distinctly uncomfortable and probably best appreciated via a lot of drone footage which I'm sure we've dutifully provided. Number one, Tai Chi in a park. In China, it's very common to see lots and lots and lots of people, usually the older members of society, gathered in parks doing Tai Chi. Because why the heck not? Tai Chi is a soft martial art which takes its inspiration from the natural movements of animals and birds. The idea behind it is that it aims to improve the circulation of one's chi, that is, the energy within the body, and the way it flows. I want to do this. I want, I, want to, I want to do this, I want to do this, <laughs> I want to do this. It's also good for focusing the mind and for meditation. So if you do visit Beijing or indeed any other large city in China, there will likely as not be groups of old people all bending and stretching together in the park. And it looks kind of fun and also ever so slightly whiffs of totalitarian regime, but try not to let that put you off. What a fun one! We found you at least a few things that seem to be uniquely Chinese and a few that perhaps weren't, but which of these unusual or interesting things surprised you? And do you know of any others that should be on this list? As always, let me A thousand people on a glass bridge is something that surprises me and continues to surprise me. Like, no, that should not be happening, fam. We need to fix that. They need to fix that. We don't need what they do. You know what I mean? <laughs> but um, yeah, man. If y'all have been 
drop some things in the comment section that weren't on the list, man, that you found fascinating. All right. And y'all stick around and stay tuned. I'm gone. Peace.